This is meteorologist Mark Molnar with your special winter weather update for 2016 and to 2017. This encompasses the months of December, January, and February, as well as most of March. Let's take a look at the North American continent here. We're going to be dealing with a La Nina type system. Before I get into the particulars of who's going to be seeing above average and a below average snowfall, take a look at the pattern. We're going to see, of course, the jet stream riding across the North American continent here. It's going to be ridging for the most part the northern branch until you get into central North America here where it's going to start to trough out here, especially across the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes, and across south central Canada here where you'll see much more snowfall than you did last winter. Taking a look out west here, that ridge keeping a lot of those northern stream systems at bay. Of course, here across the southern states, we're going to see a jet stream, but it won't be that active since there won't be as much phasing with the northern jet stream. Take a look at the east here. We still, for the most of the northern sections of the northeast, will be seeing some snowfall and systems will ride up along the eastern part of this trough here in the southeast, in mid-Atlantic, southern mid-Atlantic, for the, at least the first part of the winter time, especially December into early January. Things don't look as eventful, but that could change, especially in the Northeast, later on into the winter weather period. Take a look across North America. We're looking precipitation, departure from average. This is what we're looking at most of the country. Precipitation will be well below average from California. This is really bad news for the drought as the jet stream will be mostly out of the area for the most part, much weaker. Take a look across the southeastern portion of the United States, not very eventful and not much phasing with the northern jet stream here. Across the northeast into the Great Lakes and into the upper Midwest, this is where things get a bit more interesting. We could see on the order of systems that could produce more active snowfall precipitation wise. We're looking especially the Ohio Valley, the lower Great Lakes into southeastern Canada, southern Ontario, all the way across the Canadian border to the Dakotas, and even westward here towards the, especially the extreme north, Pacific Northwest here, up into portions of southeastern and southwestern British Columbia here. This could be interesting winter weather as things really get going, especially here in the north where the jet stream will be quite interesting to say the least and we'll have bouts of cold air that pinwheel around taking a look at temperatures departure from normal look at this very cold departure from average here as much as 25 50 and 75 percent below the average here across portions of the great lakes into southeastern Canada. Take a look at the southwest here. It's unfortunate because the drought's only going to get worse. Much warmer departure from average, especially into the Texas area, Louisiana, maybe portions of South Florida too. Not looking at many freezes. This could be good for the orange crop. Taking a look at the northeast, you got equal chances here along the coastline. Take a look here. If you go inland, especially west of the Hudson Valley and Susquehanna River Valley, this is where as I said, things could get colder, especially mid to latter portion of the winter as La Nina really starts to kick in. Taking a look across the country, this is what you've waited for. The snowfall forecast, departure from average, much below average here from the Sierra Nevada. Not good news for places like Los Angeles and San Diego here for your water source. Taking a look here across the southeastern portion of the United States, this is where things are looking below average, so you're not going to see many southern stream systems here produce wintry precipitation. And here across the north, though, look at the Ohio River Valley, the Great Lakes, southeastern and south central Canada, Pacific Northwest, the Cascades on northward into British Columbia here, and even west of Interstate 81 in New York, Pennsylvania area. We could see 25 to as much as 50 percent above your average snowfall, especially after the new year where things could really get interesting as La Nina kicks in. As I said, you will see a normal winter for the most part, coastal areas of the Northeast, but watch later on in the winter. Early portion of winter, you may have a deficit of snowfall, but later on in the winter, things could really get cranking with that jet stream. 
northeast portion of the United States. Look at this. Here's the snowfall. As I said, zooming in here, we've got most of the heavier snow produced across the Great Lakes. A really blockbuster lake effect event to start off probably the winter time here. And then we'll have a lot of those systems come out of the Ohio River Valley and move up like this and produce lots of snowfall here across portions of upstate New York, southern Ontario, and heading back towards northern Ohio here. So in northwest Pennsylvania, I'll put them in the mix here too. Later on in the winter, especially after the new year, mid to latter portion of January onward, coastal cities start to get in on it. So I'm looking at a normal winter here, even if the first part of the winter seems mild and not very stormy. So there is your preliminary 2016-2017 winter weather outlook that runs from December to March of 2017. I will have updates throughout the winter weather season and we'll continue to fine tune the forecast here at Meteomark's Weather Northeastern.